Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making another alternative using the June 2020 paper pumpkin kit. I'm going to try out a slimline card today. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Showing on screen right now is a look at the four cards I made in yesterday's alternative video. If you would like to check that video out, I do have it linked in the description box below. Speaking of these clear cards, I have gotten a lot of questions over the past couple days about what I use for these card bases. I'm hoping to come back next week and answer some of those questions and talk a little bit more about what I use. If you have any questions about the clear cardstock, leave those in the comment section either below this video or below yesterday's. And if you don't already get my notifications, make sure to click on that bell so you know when I upload this video. Before I get started on today's card, I want to share with you some of the products that I'll be using and then I'll start my voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I did already print out and store my paper pumpkin kit stamps for the month. If you're interested in finding out how I store my stamps, I will link that video in the description box below as well. From the kit today, I'll be using these two card bases, one of the pineapples, the sequins, the hello stamp, and the Stampin' Spot that came with the kit along with probably one of the skinny labels from the kit as well. From my own stash, so far the only things I grabbed out is a piece of white cardstock for my card base and a scrap of black for a mat. Now later if I pull out anything else, I will be sure to let you know. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's card, I'm going to be doing the cutting. Now for my slimline card, I am having the finish size be three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. I have seen other sizes, but I thought this would make the best use of my cardstock. So I cut that piece of white cardstock down to seven inches wide and left the height at the eight and a half inches, and then it just got folded into a card base. Next, I got out the two card bases from the kit and I cut the white back off of each of those and I will set those aside in case I need some white cardstock later. And then I cut each piece so it was three inches wide. Now on the gold striped paper, it wasn't gonna make the stripe centered, so I made my first cut at three and one eighths and then turned it around and cut it three inches. For the orange one, I just cut the width at three inches and I was good to go now. Next, I got out my scrap of black cardstock and I cut this down so it would be a mat for my two pattern paper pieces. I cut it so it would just have a nice thin border all the way around those pieces. It ended up being 8 and 3 16 inches tall and 3 and 3 16 inches wide. Now it was time to start assembling the card. The first thing I did was put adhesive on the back of the gold striped piece and then I placed that at the bottom of my black cardstock mat just trying to make sure that the border on the left, right, and bottom all looked even. For the alcohol inky looking piece, I decided to cut an angle at the bottom. I thought that would maybe give the card a little bit more motion or add a little something. So I got out my Fiskars photo trimmer and I just eyeballed or you know hand cut roughly an angle at the bottom of that. Once that angle was cut, I then adhered this piece to the top of the card, again just making sure to look for even borders and um, trying to get it lined up with the striped piece at the bottom. 
Once those two pieces were in place, it was time to place my black and white polka dotted label strip. I wasn't sure at first if I wanted the label strip to go all the way across the card front, so I played with it just a little bit, but then I discovered that it wouldn't quite fill the white card base. So I placed that down onto the matted piece so it would cover up where the two pattern papers joined, and then I cut off the excess on each side using my non-stick scissors. This piece was now finished, so I added adhesive to the back and placed it flat down on the center of my slimline card base. I hope you will pardon the interruption to this process video, but I wanted to give you a heads up on a flash hidden giveaway that I posted in yesterday's clear card video. If you are seeing this before midnight on June 22nd, 2020, make sure to check out yesterday's video to find out how you can win a prepaid code for a paper pumpkin kit for yourself. You'll want to look for a video thumbnail like what you see on the screen now, but I will also have this video linked at the end of this video if you want to just click on that easy peasy. And now back to your regularly scheduled process video. I almost forgot that this card was gonna have a sentiment on it. I didn't mention it in the original products that I was gonna use, but I am using one of the small fishtail tags from the kit. I ink up my hello stamp and just stamp that to the right of the tag. I played just a little bit with the layout of the card. I wasn't sure if I wanted my sentiment tag to go above or below the pineapple and whether or not I would have it angled. But once I did decide on how I wanted that to be, I got out my Stampin' Up! dimensionals. And these are actually not the ones that came with the kit. These are just other ones I had in my stash from past kits. I added three of those to the back of my sentiment and got that adhered down to the card base. Once that was in place, I added the same dimensionals to the back of my pineapple, and because it was going to overlap with the sentiment tag a little bit, I did need to pay attention to exactly where I put the dimensionals on this piece. You'll notice that I realized a little bit late which side was which and where to place those dimensionals. To finish this card, I'm going to add a little bit of bling, so I got out the sequins that came with the card kit. I just love how these already had an adhesive on the back, so they're ready to go. I have so many sequins in my stash for shaker cards and other things that I'm surprised I don't use them more just on card fronts. I really like the sparkle that it gives these. I added five to the front of this card, I adjusted them a little bit, and then here are some close-up looks. I hope that you're enjoying my paper pumpkin alternative videos for the month. Here is a little look at the card that I will be sharing tomorrow in a video using the contents from the kit. I hope you'll stop back by to see how it's made. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's very quick and easy slimline card using the June 2020 paper pumpkin kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.